viewers, welcome back to the Digirati Talk Show. Today we are hosting engineer Ivan James, a software developer, someone who has been dealing in information technology for a good number of years, and he's here today to share his story with you, to motivate you, to and to sensitize you. Let's welcome engineer Ivan James. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right. So, Mr. Ivan James. Can you tell us about yourself? Who is Mr. Ivan James? Uh, first of all, I'm called Ivan James Msenzi, mm. and I'm a software developer. I work at DGP Technologies Limited. So, uh, at DGP Technologies Limited, I also work as a production director. So, briefly, that can be Ivan James. Mm. So, Mr. Ivan James, can you tell us about your school life? Where did you go for your primary, secondary, and university studies? Yeah, okay, my primary, I had it from Lima Public Primary School. It's a primary school from the Lima District, and uh, after primary, I went for Oliver at a school called St. Andrea Carlos College. And in the same school, I did a level from there. Then after my A level, I joined university. Uh, that was in Bara University of Science and Technology where I did a bachelor's degree in computer engineering. That is from 2012 to 2016. That's the year when I was at university. Mm, that is interesting. So every child normally has a dream probably from their childhood until they grow old. So what was your dream as you grew up and as you went through your education? Okay, when I was young, uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't have a dream, I would jump on everything which made me happy. But uh, later on as I grew my education career, mm -hmm. I came to grow a sense of wanting to be an engineer, but not knowing which kind of a, which kind of an engineer. So in any field, so long as there would be engineering, I would love just the title of being an engineer. But as more concentration of knowledge comes in, starting to a level where a person chooses to specialize in given subjects, mm. then I realized that maybe I need to do something related to technology by that time. So my dream to become fully known to myself was until senior six, when I knew that now, in the future, from now, I want to be an engineer in the field of technology. Yes. So by the time you got done with your high school studies, you knew you were going to become a computer engineer? No. Uh, in, in technology, there are many engineering sections, oh. but um, I was hoping of telecommunication engineering because by that time it was the most common thing talked about. Mm. But I was, as I was nearing university towards the, the two or three okay. months to university when I was starting to apply, that's when I got to know that there is computer engineering and this is what is in it. So that changed my mind after researching more on computer engineering because it was a new course here in the country. Mm. So being a new course here in the country, few people knew about it. So through a friend, I got more knowledge about it. And by that time, before I joined the campus, I managed to talk to a lecturer who was teaching computer engineering who told me more about it so that I could go for it as my bachelor's degree. Oh. So before you went for your university, within that period of after high school and before you go for the university, you had already involved yourself in information-related issues? Yes, but not on a, a bigger platform. Mm. Yeah, because I managed at least to talk to people who were in the field of, of computing. I understand. Uh, as we find it in our communities today, most of our parents today tend to decide what their children do for a course at the university level. Mm. So for your course, the course that you did for your university, did you choose it for yourself or were you influenced by someone? No, I was not influenced by someone. Uh, I think I might be like, a, my parents never used to make choices for me. So long as they just know the school is fine and they are okay with the school fees paid there. Mm. So whatever I would love to do, they would support me. Which is good. Yes. So when you are given, which course did you do at your university? I did the Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. Mm. So when you, we were given that course, mm. what did you expect? Uh, when I was given that course, I expected to sleep in computers, actually. <laughs> but the, the expectation was really, really cut short when I 
went into my first lecture and they were teaching math. Mm. <laughs> so that's why I realized, ah, so this is not sleeping in computers as mm. I expected. Are you trying to say you're, you're not a fan of mathematics? It's not. No, um, I'm a fan of mathematics. Huh. I did mathematics in mm. high school. Mm -hmm. But what I expected at university, it was not going to go back into the field of calculating numbers. But so that happened in the first You lecture. thought this time around you had to only interact with yes, computers? Yes, I thought probably. in my first lecture they would bring a computer and they say, ah, it is there, open it. <laughs> I get that. So. You've had your university in Uganda. Mm. You see how lecturers and students relate, how they teach, I mean, the teaching methods and how all that goes on. What do you think about the teaching methods in the universities in Uganda? Well, I think the teaching methods are okay, but not excellent. Mm. Uh, the better teaching methods also, I think, come with the resources which are provided to the universities. Mm -hmm. Like my course, Computer Engineering, the resources, the resources it requires are expensive, so it, it, it is up to the university to use the few resources available to make sure it can provide the best it can afford. Yeah, but for the time I was there, it was okay, mm -hmm. because the curriculum was international, meaning the person who is doing computer engineering in Uganda is taking the same curriculum as the person who is doing computer engineering, let's say, in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, throughout your university, period, did you, were you and your fellow classmates probably allowed to interact with computers so much or what you, you did so much was theoretical? No, I can't say it was theoretical because first of all, me myself I had a computer and mm. also my fellow students had a computer and the lecture rooms also where we are studying from had computers, at least in computer engineering we are few students, mm. so the computers in the lecture rooms were more than enough for us. I understand. So what piece of advice do you have for students who are still undergoing university education? What I can tell the students who are undergoing university education is to concentrate on their studies, mostly find out the practical thing they can do whatever they are studying, mm -hmm. because that is most important. When you come outside here and you start struggling with life, the most important thing which can easily get you out of an employment is the skill you have. It doesn't matter how many questions you answered, how many answers you can program, mm -hmm. but what matters is you as a person, what can you do practically, what can you deliver in a given field which you studied. So, tell us about your life after university. Uh, as I've told you before, I finished in 2016. It was around May when I did my last paper at university. Mm. So, my life at university was good for the four years when I was there. Mm. But then I have to go out of the university. This happens to everyone. Of course. But now, after university, the issue was how mm. do you enter into the world where there is competition? Mm. Because you realize there are many people who have studied. So, first of all, landing a job in the first period is hard. Yeah. That is totally true. Mm -hmm. Not even in Uganda here only. But worldwide, landing a job as soon as you finish campus is very, very hard. But remember, I've told you that a skill is important. Mm -hmm. From university, I had acquired a skill in software programming. So, the first money I earned immediately after university was through developing a website. So with that money and my fellow colleagues, we started something. And that something, up to right now, it is the one which is flowing us. So that was DGB Technologies Limited. It is a company which we started after university. So through that company, we have been able to promote ourselves as one of the best computer people in the country. Mm. So when you got done with the university, you didn't wait for someone to probably look at you, put you out and employ you, you decided to employ yourself? No, I didn't wait for someone to employ me, but the issue was I looked for someone to know that I can do something in relation to website for him. So my skills was to convince someone that I can do a website for you. So we did that, 
and after the person agreed that oh if you think you can do a website for me go and do it if i like it that's when i will pay mm. so good we went worked on the website the person liked it that's the way we started but he didn't ask how many C- how many cgps or new grades or what he didn't ask that he was concentrated more on what can you deliver for me to pay you mm. so the first money was through making website for clients on the skill which I had and from the university. So you attained the, some of your skills or most of those skills from the university that you went to? I attained some of the skills. Some? Yes. And the most important skill was to know how to learn on yourself by yourself mm. without someone teaching you. Uh, in the field of computing, it is a field where things change yeah. time and again. So sticking to the old me- to the old methods which you have learned at campus, you may not survive with them in the next two three years. Mm. So the skill, the most important skill I learned at university was to teach myself something. So with that, I went to visit to the field. So I have learned more in the field more than what I learned at the university. But I can't say the university was a waste of time. It was time which prepared me to learn more in the future. Mm, understand. So, as we both know, IT, IT is a very big field. There is yes. a lot of things you can do in information technology. Mm-hmm. So, what is your specialization when it comes to IT? My specialization when it comes to IT is software development. Yeah, software developer. Yes. That is interesting. How do you find your profession as a software developer? Tell us about your life as a software developer. Okay, first and foremost, software development is stressing. Mm. <laughs> Yes, but it is enjoyable because when you sit behind that computer or in front of that computer, you create something. Mm. You feel that you are God yourself because you start something from scratch and you see it having life. And when you deliver to it to a client, he sees magic mm. that, ah, can a human being do this? So it makes me feel that I'm part of a world where I can create something and somebody appreciates the outcome. Mm. So the life of the software developer being stressful because you have to make sure that the details are correct, whatever you are making in software development. Mm. Because somebody outside there is going to use it. I know. Yes. So nothing ever runs smooth? Mm. Like you have to, to come upon those issues where you have to solve them again, probably get yourself back up on your phone. So what problems have you faced as a software developer working with big big technology? Okay, the problem I've faced as a software developer is people have not yet fully appreciated technology in this country. Mm. Because as, as a software developer, the software as I develop, I want people to use them. Mm-hmm. So if I come up with something and a client is unable to use it, or a client thinks that it might not help me, then that is a big challenge for me. If people, what I can say, I have found that people are more comfortable using unautomated things. Let's say in a business, a person mm-hmm. would like to keep writing his records every day rather than getting a small system, put it on a computer and be recording his information in a computer. He thinks it is more good to write it down. So appreciating Technology is still a big problem which I have faced, but I hope in the future things are going to change because people have started appreciating. So when we come across such problems, we definitely should have we should have like an idea of how we can solve such issues. Why do how do you think we can solve such problems? Uh, the problem first of all is to sensitize people. The, the question is how. Sensitizing people would go maybe put a radio advert, Mm -hmm. but in technology that's not how things should work. Mm -hmm. The best principle is sit down with someone, teach a person, because what we have found out is that people don't like to use technology because of the sake they don't like it. Mm -hmm. People fear, they think these things are expensive, they think these things are are for people who went to school. Mm -hmm. But most of the people who in this country who have businesses are people who didn't maybe go to school. So it is up to us people in the technology world to teach them that these things can be learned 
even if you didn't go to school and these things can help you in this and this so when you show that person that the results of using let's say a technology device would bring more profits to your business than when you use the manual way of doing things so we have to teach the people how these things work and how they can help themselves promote the business as they are doing mm. As I said before, you're working with Deep Beat Technologies, yes. an IT company, and you're running it as a couple of people. No, you're not. You're not doing it individually. Yes. Do you do you ever think of probably diverting from that and working as an individual, or do you want to keep it going as a company and with another members in your company? From the start of technology, the basic principle of it is that you can never go solo. Hmm solo breaks you because as you know technology is a wide thing so you can't say you will go as a person and tackle each and every bit the more you are in a group you concentrate more to a given particular thing and you end up and your colleague also concentrates on another thing so that at the end you come together and develop something bigger mm. so if you try to do things alone that limits you. There are things you can't do as a person alone. But when you are too serious for in a group, you can make something really appreciated. Mm. I understand. So you're a person that supports teamwork rather than working alone. Teamwork all the way I support it. Hmm. That is interesting. And but still we understand working with individuals like more than one person you have to come across those arguments probably sometimes you don't agree. Mm. Sometimes, like you disagree about something, mm. how do you handle such situations? Okay, first of all, when you are working as a group, you know human beings have different characters. Mm. But when you are working as a group, let's say you are in a group of people who have a common goal. So setting the goals clear to everyone and say, we are aiming at producing this. Mm. That's the main goal. So once each and every individual in a group focuses on the main goal, that at the end of this year, we want to make this, or we want to produce something like this. Mm. So whatever comes short within that period of attaining a goal, you can overlook it. But if you are in a group and each and every individual has his own goal, that's where the challenges come from. So from the first word go, you should make sure that in a team, at least all of you know what you are aiming at, mm -hmm. what are your targets. So that when the problems come in when you are trying to hit your targets, you can easily remind yourself that however much this has come in, but this is our target. We have not come this far to stop here. Mm. So at least each and every individual can understand that. Because by the time you decide, okay, let this person come on a team, you have already gone through the person, mm. known what is what does he like, what makes the person annoyed. At least that makes you easily to to be able to associate with the person in the team. I understand. So I believe I believe you being in the IT world, you've seen people come up with companies. Mm. They go on for some time and probably some of them collapse. Mm. Maybe it's a, like a couple of days or months and they can't run it anymore. What do you think brings about that? Okay, what brings about that, it depends still on the targets you have. I've told you technology, when you're in the IT, in the IT sector, it is not as if you're growing a maze, you expect at the end of three months some, everything will be okay. Mm. In technology, there are very di there are dynamics which you have to play around with. So, you should first of all embrace what they call change once you are in this field. Because once you embrace that change is a factor of the IT world, then there you can know that at this time the, dyma the dynamics have changed. You mm -hmm. also change the system on how you have been doing things. But when you say that now, this is our way, let what come may. So whatever comes will sweep you. So in this world, when you're in the world of technology, you have to embrace change. And you know, if this product does not work, 
what about we make this one? Mm. What about we make the other one? We have been dealing with this such of com- with this kind of companies, and they are not bringing good money. What what if we change? So understanding that when you are in this field is very very important for you to settle in and at least to grow your companies more. Mm-hmm. Okay. As as humans, in everything we do, we always aim at making our lives better than we are right now. Mm-hmm. For some, we want to we want to be better in the time to come. We have to have we need to have more than what we have right now. So where do you see yourself in time to come? Five years or more? Ah, in five years to come, I expect to rock this world as an IT profession. Mm. Because I have told you that it makes me feel like good. Creating something mm. from baby steps until somebody appreciates and starts using it. So Continuing to do that, I expect at least in the five years to come, something big which the universe can embrace might have come up, mm. and maybe I might be the one who has brought it up. Yeah, so within the next five years, I really look forward to them, because I'm making something out of the knowledge I have. Mm. I like that. So I believe out there in the world there are people who really want to be like you. The youths who are really looking forward to be IT specialists, specialists, probably engineers like you are here. So what piece of advice do you have for the people out there in the world? Let's talk about the youth especially. The youth, what I can tell you, you were born winners. So by the time you land on this world, just know you were born, you were born a winner. Mm-hmm. But that does not make you a winner throughout your life. So you have to know that the world is competitive, mm. and every time new people are coming into this world with more knowledge and maybe talent more than you, but you should learn not to give up on things. Try A, try B, so that you know what can work for me. Because when you are youth, you have plenty of time to make mistakes, mm. and it is very, very important to learn from mistakes. Because when you don't learn from mistakes, you don't know how best you can change things. Like uh, the greatest story, the person who invented the bulb, he tried several times, let's say a hundred, but every time he would try, he wouldn't say that I have failed, let's say, the fifth time. No, he would say, I have found out the fifth time that it cannot work this way. So with that, you have plenty of time to try out and find the best results from you when you are still a youth. Mm. So there is now plenty of things which a person can do. So as a youth, learn, interact, socialize. Mm. From that you know your strengths, your weaknesses. So by knowing those ones, you can know where to learn from and where not to learn from. Thank you so much, Engineer Ivan James. Um, as Engineer Ivan James has told us, always believe that you're born a winner. You don't have to give up easily. Keep building from scratch. As I said, I quote his words, learn and socialize. Involve your people, yourself with people that can help you get somewhere and always believe that you will achieve anything that you look forward to. Thank you for watching. Sarah Nisuma, the host, did